In this video, we are going to review the topic of complex numbers and look at the key concepts that we need to know in order to start practicing some of these IB exam style questions. So we'll look at complex numbers and how de Moivre's theorem appears in some common exam questions. Okay, so if I start with a complex number, so W1 and let's make our complex number 2 plus 2i. So firstly, we should know that this is a complex number because we saw we see this letter in here, i, and i is the square root of negative 1. It's the most famous imaginary number. We know that we can't have a real answer for uh, the square root of negative 1, but there is an imaginary answer there, and it's, and it's i, and we use this in this topic of complex numbers where we have real and imaginary numbers. Okay, so we can see an i in our number here, and how we can how we can view this is there's a real component of two and an imaginary component of two as well. So it's two plus two i, where the first number is the real and the second is the imaginary component. And we can write our complex numbers in a few different formats. So in this format here is the same as as this one up here. That this is called Cartesian form. So Cartesian form is when you have a plus i b, and uh, a very a very important concept that we need to know is how to convert from Cartesian form to modulus argument form, which is this one, uh, r cos theta plus r sine theta, and that's actually the same as this one here. This r cis theta, cis is just a short version of writing cos plus i sine. So if you ever see cis, that's just the same as cos theta plus i sine theta. Now this last one here, this is this is called polar form, or you might see it as Euler's form. Uh, this is also a way of writing a complex number, but not as commonly seen as the other, the other two. Okay, so if we have our complex number here in Cartesian form, we can actually draw where this number is on a axis. And in this topic of complex numbers, this is called an Argand diagram. Argand diagram, where our vertical axis is the imaginary and our horizontal is the real. So we can plot where our, our our number is here because it has a real component of positive 2 and an imaginary component of positive 2. So our number will be here on our Argan diagram. And this is currently in Cartesian form. If we wanted to write it in uh, modulus argument form, what those two words mean, the modulus means the size, the length. So if we picture this, this complex number as being this line here, the modulus will be the length of this number. And you may have spotted or you may have seen in a textbook the length of a diagonal line. We know we can just use Pythagoras with the with the two components, with the X and Y component or the real and imaginary component. And the argument, so the modulus is the length, the argument is the angle that our uh, complex number makes to the uh, the positive x-axis, so it'll be this one here. That's the modulus, that's the argument of a complex number. So let's convert our, our complex number here into modulus argument form. The modulus we express as uh, W1 with these absolute value signs around it. This is the modulus, and it's just going to be Pythagoras. It's the square root of each of the components squared. So two squared plus, and the imaginary component here is positive two, so plus two squared. Now this will be uh, the square root of 4 plus 4, which is 8, and this is just 2 root 2. So this will be the modulus, and that is the length of this line here. Now the argument, theta, uh, because we know the horizontal and the vertical component of our diagonal line, that's the opposite and the adjacent, we can use the tan to the negative 1 of opposite over adjacent, or the, the imaginary component over the horizontal, the real component, and that's how we find our argument uh, for for these complex numbers in Cartesian form. Now, tan to the negative one of two over two, that's just tan to the negative one of, of one. And if we remember our trig trigonometric ratios, one, one, root two, pi on four, we know that tan of pi on four is one. Uh, so this angle here will be pi on four. Okay, so we've found our uh, our number here, so we can write W1 as 2 root 2 cis of pi on 4. You could put the longer version and put 2 root 2 cos pi on 4 plus uh, i sine pi on 4, but this is just a shortened version. 
Okay, so this is a very important key concept, knowing how to convert a complex number from Cartesian form to modulus argument form. Now, if I gave you another complex number, W2, and I'm going to give this to you uh, straight away in modulus argument form. Uh, if it was root 2, cis 3 pi on 4, uh, what some common IB questions often ask is they'll say a new complex number Z, this is W1 multiplied by W2. It's the multiplication of two complex numbers. And if we have our complex numbers in modulus argument form, which we have uh, here and here, there is a formula to, to multiply two complex numbers. We just simply multiply the, uh, the moduluses or the moduli of the two complex numbers. So two root two multiplied by root two. And this will be 2 times and 2, so it'll be 4, and then we write cis, and then we add the two arguments. So 3 pi on 4 plus pi on 4 is 4 pi on 4, which is just pi. And I've done this one on purpose because this is an interesting complex number, z here, 4 cis pi, because we can actually... Uh, get a simplified answer for what this is in Cartesian form because this is just 4 cos pi plus uh, i times 4 sine pi and we should know if we did a tr our trigonometry unit that sine of pi all the way over at pi here sine is the the height and sine of pi is 0 so if sine of pi is 0 4 times 0 is 0, therefore there is no imaginary component uh, to our complex number z. We will just have a real component, and cos of pi is negative 1, so it'll be negative 4. So the complex number z just has a real component here of negative 4, and there is no imaginary component. So have a look, uh, be on the lookout for complex numbers that only have an imaginary and non-real or, or just a real and no imaginary because they do appear very often in IB questions. Okay, now lastly I want to look at De Moivre's theorem. So De Moivre's theorem helps us raise complex numbers to a power. So let's have a look at the formula here. If we have some complex number to the power of n, De Moivre's theorem tells us that we raise the modulus to the power of n, and then we multiply our argument by uh, n. So that's how we get this form here. There's r to the n cis n theta, that's just the shortened version, and here is the, here's the polar form version as well. So a small example of that is if I wanted to raise, let's say our first complex number, w1 to the power of three, if I wanted to raise it to the power of three, what we need to do is we need to put it into uh, we need to put it into modulus argument form first, which we have here. So we'll have two root two cis pi on four all to the power of three, and then by using De Moivre's theorem, we know that this is just two root two to the power of three. Now that is two to the power of three and root two to the power of three. Two to the power of three is eight. Uh, root 2 to the power of 3 is 2 root 2, so we'll get 16 root 2, and then cis, and this will become 3 pi on 4. Okay, so that's how we use De Moivre's theorem, and I'm just going to um, quickly show you, and you might be able to practice some questions on this, De Moivre's theorem is most popular in questions where you want to find the roots of a complex number. And what a question might look like is they'll say, if z cubed is equal to 8i, where z is the roots of this complex number 8i, uh, we know that we can uh, turn 8i into a complex number in modulus argument form. This would become 8 cis pi on 2. This takes a bit of practice, but we know that uh, 8i doesn't have a real component, so that would be eight units directly up and directly up will have a pi on two arguments that's how I got the eight cis pi on two and then if we wanted to take the cubed root by using De Moivre's theorem uh, we know that 
it would just be 8 cis pi on 2. Uh, and uh, we actually do need to consider it'll be pi on 2 plus 2 pi n because this just means it's pi on 2 but it could be pi on 2 in the next revolution in the next revolution and this becomes very important when we're finding the roots of a complex number so I will put 2 pi n uh, this will all be to the power of a third when we're taking the cubed root so I will let you think about this one uh, there is a few questions like this in the in the question bank uh, and and in past IB papers. So uh, Demoivre's theorem is very important if we want to power complex numbers and also take the roots. And there might be multiple solutions when we take the roots. Okay, so I encourage you to practice, uh, start practicing some complex numbers questions. Uh, the key concepts that we need to know is how to convert our complex numbers between all, the, all of the different forms and how to apply Demoivre's theorem depending on what the question's asking. Okay, good luck.